everyone, it's Steph here. Happy F-Series Friday and welcome back to another video. A couple of weeks ago, we did a video which revealed your average knowledge of us. And so this week, we've decided to give you some insider information so that you guys can get to know us a little bit better. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the waffle. Take it away, Beef. Hi, I'm Beth. That's Alfie. I'm 23. Alfie's seven. My YouTube channel is the Beth One YouTube channel and I am from Yorkshire but I now live in Lancashire. Hello everyone, I am Steph from All About Steph One on YouTube. I am 20 years old and I am from Manchester. Hi, my name is Kira Megan. I'm 18 years old from Norwich in the UK and I am from the channel Kira Megan F1. Hi, it's Dorney here. I'm from F1 Dorney. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Scotland. Shumai, I'm Hannah, I'm 23, I'm one half of the purple sector and I'm originally from Wrexham in North Wales but I currently live in Cardiff. Hi guys, I'm Charlotte, I'm 22 and I'm from the channel The Purple Sector and I live in Essex in England. Who is your all-time favourite driver and why? I'm kind of going to say one that people probably aren't that impressed with but some people might be impressed with it and it is Lewis Hamilton. I don't want to feel like I'm doing basic and I'm just saying it because he's the best but Lewis is my all-time favourite driver. He is the first driver that I actually followed going into the sport. He was, I don't even know why, I didn't think I knew him. I think I just saw him on the screen like ham and I was like, I like you. I don't know why because I don't eat ham. I don't know what it was. I was just like, I like you and I've stuck with him ever since. I'm so proud of him and I love being a Lewis Hamilton fan. My favourite driver of all time is Lewis because he was the reason that I started watching F1 and I just think he's not human he's amazing the records that he's beaten I don't think he would ever beat them so my all-time favorite driver is Lewis it's Roman Grosjean I love him Roman has just had such a interesting career he didn't have a linear path to Formula One he had a fantastic junior career he had some brilliant results in Formula One and it's just really interesting to watch how his career has developed over time and if it wasn't for his crash in Bahrain how people might have remembered him and he is just one of the nicest drivers to ever be on the grid. He's always looking out for everyone. He's always positive. And I'm really going to miss him in 2021. So I'm probably going to have to say Jensen Button for this because he was the first driver that I ever supported. And his name was recognisable for me and synonymous with Formula One. So yeah, we'll probably go with him. Although Senna does deserve a shout out because I absolutely love him. I'm a big Michael Schumacher fan it's the book um but yeah he's been an idol of mine not just in racing but overall i think he's an incredibly dynamic driver incredibly versatile and just a role model i think for everyone in the sport and he was the first driver i ever supported in formula one and also for i share my birthday with him because we're both born on the 3rd of january so i don't have like one favorite but some defo defo highlights have to be like jensen button um daniel ricardo Nico Rosberg, Nico Hulkenberg. Honestly, I could go on, um, but yeah, I don't have one favourite. What is your favourite hobby outside of motorsport? This is a really difficult one. Cause I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I just like doing little bits, but like the main thing is motorsport, but like there's not a main thing I really like to do outside of motorsport. For those of you who know me super well, you'll know I'm obsessed with musical theatre and throughout my entire teenage years, I was involved in tons of productions and plays and 2020 was the first year that I wasn't able to do those. So yeah, that was disappointing. Thank you, Corona. I would probably say reading. I have over 300 books. Um, I especially love history books. Uh, especially on the Tudors and the Wars of the Roses. Unfortunately, I don't do it as much now, but I did for a very, very long time in my life. I did lots of horse riding. Um, outside of motorsports, I don't really have many hobbies. I love going to the gym, keeping fit, exercising. Um, I'm missing the gyms being open so much at the minute. So if they could hurry up and open again, that would be lovely for me. I absolutely love traveling. Like I travel everywhere obviously not in these current times but i absolutely love traveling and as soon as we can travel again i will be out of here on a plane what would be the first thing you would do if you won the lottery buy a property honestly i would buy a house do it up resell it i would get my mom a place to stay and i would also pay off my dad's mortgage for this house i would buy a pc 
I would buy just the best PC. I would buy the best, I just buy the, the best gaming setup. I think first thing I'd do is give money to my parents. I think just to pay them back for how much of an incredible support they've been my whole life. And then I would probably take my whole family on a around the world trip because I know there's certain places that my parents would like to go and see that they might have a chance to, say for example, Australia. I think one of the first things I would do if I won the lottery would be to have a nice little spa day, treat myself, a nice relaxing day. Um, something like that, go get a brunch, just a nice little day out, make a day of it, you know? If I won the lottery right now, the first thing I would do is pay off the mortgage for my parents' house. If we weren't in corona times, the first thing I would do is book a holiday. I would honestly go and just book a uh, one-way trip around the world. That would be the first thing. And give some money to my mum, dad and my sister. What's your favourite film? Honestly, I don't have a favourite film. Um, I'm quite bad for re-watching films. If you know me, you know that I used to just not watch films or movies ever because I literally couldn't watch it for that long. My attention span is really, really bad. I've just grown up on YouTube, like not on films. Mm, I'm not someone who watch films. I have a really, really short attention span. There's two sides of me. So on the one side, you have the Disney, the fluffy side. And on the other side, you have hardcore action. And on the Disney fluffy side, it's probably Tangled, but on the hardcore action side, it is most definitely Transformers, the second one, Revenge of the Fallen. Probably either Clueless or Burlesque. Bit of a guilty pleasure. Also, Marvel, actually, the Marvel Avengers films are some of my favourites, but yeah, I like a good check flick. It's kind of a bit of a pick me up if you're ever feeling down. I don't actually have one, I don't think. My favourite cartoon ever is Beauty and the Beast and I've liked that since I was literally a child. So I'm going to have to say Beauty and the Beast for this one. I really like The Grinch, the animated one at Christmas. I love films like Gone Girl, um, kind of is that a thriller. I don't really know. I hate comedies. Honestly, I'm so bad with comedies. I don't find them funny. I will say, me before you, I wanted to watch that film for ages and then when I watched it, I absolutely bawled. So maybe maybe that's my favourite film. Dream car? Probably got two options. Personalised Mini Cooper with the Welsh dragon flag on top. A little bit cringy, I know, but I like it. Or the Ferrari FXXK. But it isn't road legal, which is a bit problematic because I don't have several millions of pounds to spend on a track day. My dream car when I was little used to be a Cadillac, a blue one. But now I absolutely love the Audi R8. I think that's what I want. That's what I want when I'm older. Or a really nice Range Rover. Um, my dream car, always growing up, I wanted a papaya orange McLaren. Um, the speed tails. I've seen them and they are absolutely beautiful, although I don't think I'd want an orange speed tail. Dream car. It has to be something electric and if I wanted to think of the dream, it's something that I can't afford, so we'll go with the Lotus Avaya. At the moment I have a Fiat 500 and I guess my, not my dream car, but my car that I want to get next is the Fiat 500 but the Abarth because everything I love about the Fiat 500, how small it is, uh, because I'm a useless driver. I want that, but I want something that packs a bit more punch and the Fiat 500 Abarth just looks so cool. Now, one of my dream cars is a McLaren P1. I think they're gorgeous. I used to really want a Mercedes GLA, I think I wanted, yeah, I wanted to say GLA, but recently I've been really wanting to look at electric cars and going into electric. So the dream car that I would love is a Mercedes EQC. They're the current, you know, top of the range electric car. But obviously, by the time I get to the stage where I would get an electric car, there'd probably be a new one out. If a genie gave you three wishes, what would you choose? I'm gonna try go outside, outside the box here. So what can I think of? My first wish would be to get rid of coronavirus because we're all sick of this world that we live in now. Second wish would be for equality and equity of all races across the world. And third wish, I'm going to be selfish and wish for a massive, expensive house with everything that I want in it and everything that I like. I would, choose, I would ask for some money. I would ask for some money. I don't think anybody would not ask for some money. Um, I would ask to be as skinny because it's really difficult to do it by yourself. And I would probably ask to, I don't know, take Jean Todd's place in being the president of the FIA. I don't know. Can that happen? I don't even know what you, if they can do that, but that's what I'd ask for. I would have money not be an obstacle in life anymore because I feel like that's something that I have had to deal with a lot and many people have to deal with. That all of the cats would have a lovely home. 
for the rest of their lives. There would be no stray cats on the streets and everyone would just be lovely to them. And then Alfie would live forever. If I had three wishes, I think will peace would be a good one. I think end global warming and kind of make everyone become more environmentally friendly because it's one of the biggest challenges of our generation. And it would be nice to be able to solve that like that, but sadly that's not possible. And I think respect for all human rights. I'm really bad at sleeping. So I think I would wish for the ability to be able to sleep well, be able to just like pop my head down and fall off to sleep. That would be one thing. Um, I would also wish for, I don't know. I just want to be able to sleep. One of my wishes would be to make F-Series so successful um, and just smash it with F-Series, which we currently are doing anyway, but smash it even more. Um, my second wish would be to live abroad, I think. I want to live abroad for a bit. And my third wish is to have more wishes because I'm sure that I'll think of other things I want to wish for in the future, but I can't think right now. What is the first thing you'll do when life returns to normal? I think it would give my friends a hug. Sounds a bit silly, but I think that's probably one of the biggest things I've missed is not being able to see a lot of my friends. I think that would be nice. I think a lot of people probably want to go on holiday and stuff, but my friends mean the world to me. So I think that would be one of the first things I'd do. Hopefully when life returns to normal, we'll be booking a holiday with Elliot, my boyfriend, and going on holiday somewhere nice. I am going to take a trip down to London. Me and my partner, we had planned all the way back in July for us to go to London. One, for us to go and watch Formula E, which was my birthday gift to him. And two, to go do a cocktail making class at the Shard, which was his birthday gift to me. So we've got a lot of experiences that we need to get through and we usually go to London once, maybe twice a year. So we are definitely overdue a visit, but as soon as everything is safe, that is what we will be doing. The first thing I will probably do is go on a night out because it's been nearly a year. And as a university student, night outs are part of our culture. So I've missed out on a whole year and probably more than a year. So yeah, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I think I know life will be um, back to normal when I can go to the pub. Oh my goodness, I've missed having a pint. Just want a wee pint, want to be at the pub. I think that's when I'll know that life is normal again. Go and see my friends and just probably go out. <laughs> probably have a night out. I mean, a lot of them are at uni, but hopefully when they come back, I will just have a like, good night out with them, just be able to get close to them and hopefully be able to go to a Grand Prix and hopefully be able to go to a festival and hopefully to meet all my F-Series girls because that's something we've wanted to do for ages now, but obviously we haven't been able to. So I'm hoping and praying in summer we will be able to do something along those lines because I want to meet these girls. Too hot or too cold? I don't like either. Definitely too hot. I am the coldest person ever and I can tell you, I hate it. I would rather be too hot, 100%. I hate being cold. I'm a summer baby. I love the sun, but I would rather be too cold because you can make yourself warm. I definitely would rather be too cold, I think. Mmm too cold because you can always put lots and lots of layers on. The thing is, I'm constantly cold, so I'm gonna go with too cold primarily because I'm used to it and also it means I can just put a onesie on and some fluffy socks and the heating on. Big night out or big night in? I think it depends on my mood. This depends on the mood. Like it really has to be ratioed. Definitely a big night out. Get me to a party right now. <laughs> Probably say big night out. I I quite enjoy getting to go to nightclubs and have a dance with my friends and just enjoy ourselves. You can't enjoy a big night in when all of your nights are in. So if you were to ask me right now, I'd say big night out. So I, could, I used to go out like Friday nights and then that's just me done. And then I'm ready for like the F1 weekend. I'm such an extrovert. So I would say a big night out followed by a big night in because you need to recover. If I want to go on a big night out, I will go all out. I'm not someone who will do things half hearted. If I say I'm going out tonight, you better believe I'm not getting through the door till 6 a.m. What is your most irrational fear? Do we know? I don't really have an irrational fear. I'm not afraid of spiders. I actually don't mind them. I like snakes. I actually can't believe I'm going to tell you this. Dying. I don't like sitting on the edge of rows 
for example like if you're in a church and you are on the end of the pew or if you were in a classroom and there was like a row of tables and you were the one on the end next to like the corridor i have a fear that someone is going to come from anywhere pick me up and take me away if i am on the end i hate it i feel so uneasy despite me being a former national swimmer okay i actually am very scared of drowning i don't like the sea that's something i don't like i just don't like the sea i think because i don't like walking on the sea because you know you get like the crabs and all that sort of stuff underneath I don't like it so maybe the sea i don't really know oh can i say this i hate slugs give me spiders give me snakes fine slugs absolutely not honestly my biggest fears are clowns moths i hate spiders Snakes and Elliot has a pet snake called Bob. I hate boats, I get really seasick. But I'd say my biggest fear is definitely clowns and moths. What would be your dream Grand Prix to attend and why? Baku. 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 Baku has the vibes. Maybe actually Monaco, because in case you guys haven't known, I have walked the track at Monaco, but I walked it a week after the Grand Prix, so all the apexes and the barriers and everything was still up. But Actually attending that would be insane. Probably Monaco because I know that in no normal world would I ever be able to afford to go to Monaco and live the life. I just think it's got such a great atmosphere and it's one where the whole weekend is the event, it's not really the race. So I think that that would be a really good one to go to and one that I probably wouldn't go to normally. So but that makes it a dream. Been to Silverstone twice. I'm hoping, well, I'm hoping to go to Baku with Steph this year. So that's something we're half booked. We're also looking to go to Monza as well. So my dream one, honestly, any, I'm absolutely obsessed with any Grand Prix. I think Silverstone is a dream for everybody and I'm so lucky to have been twice. So Baku was the other one and hopefully I'm gonna go. I'd honestly be happy going to any Grand Prix. Um, Singapore, I think would be amazing to go to. Baku, I've said Mexico in the past. Obviously Silverstone. So many to name. Probably the Belgian Grand Prix, to go and sit near Eau Rouge, it's the cars, I think. And to camp as well, because when we did the British Grand Prix back in 2016, we stayed in the hotel and we didn't camp. And it was quite nice to camp, have that authentic fan experience. And Belgium is a lovely country, so I'd quite like to go there. I think my dream GP changes every time that I get asked this question, because I just want to go to them all. But I, I would, I really want to go to Singapore just because it's a night race and just the lights and everything. And I would, the only time I've been to Singapore is for a stopover and I really just want to explore the country. And finally, what in your opinion is the most underrated racing series? I don't think I can pick just one. There are so many. I think F2 is actually really underrated. Like the races that we have and like the drama is so much better than Formula One. And I'm so happy that Kira made me watch it. Formula Three. Formula 3. Honestly, probably Formula 3 just because of purely how chaotic it is. So you get Formula 1, everyone's watching it, and then a lot of people have started to watch F2 this year, or last year, sorry, but still not everybody's getting to that F3 hype, and I don't get why. <laughs> oh my goodness. It just brings a smile to your face, doesn't it? There's just so much chaos going on, and it's just, it's just wonderful. <laughs> So if you don't watch Formula 3 or if you watch Formula 2 and you haven't watched Formula 3 yet, this year is the year to get on it. I tell you, it is amazing. Get on it. I'm going to say MotoGP. It's a really scary series to watch, but it's super on edge, super close racing. And the guys have the biggest balls in the motorsport industry to be able to get on a bike and, you know, go as fast as they do with little to no protection. Or no, they don't have the protection of a car. So yeah, I love MotoGP and yeah, I think it's really underrated. You should go watch it. But I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna go super formula in Japan, I think. For a lot of the junior series, the path is seen as Formula 2, Formula 3, and that kind of way up where Super Formula tends to not have as many drivers go to it. I know Pierre Galsey, for example, went to it before he got his F1 seat, but I think it's a really underrated series, really talented drivers. We need to also keep um, bigging up W Series because they're doing amazing things for women and getting more women in and girls in motorsport, which obviously as F Series we really want. So I would say W Series as well. And so that was the final question. Thank you so much to Kira for doing that voiceover. We hope this helped you learn a little bit more about us and don't forget to comment down below your answers to our questions so that we can get to know you too. Make sure you like this video and subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss another upload. 
Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next Friday with another F-Series video. Bye!